dear friends, welcome to the serial lectures on traditional Chinese culture. Today we will talk about kung fu. We will practice tai chi, the Chinese martial art. Wu shu, Chinese martial arts. Known in the West as Kung Fu, is a cultural heritage of the Chinese people. It has graceful movements. It can help people keep fit and healthy, so it is very popular in China. It is one of the four national pieces of China, together with traditional Chinese medicine, Beijing opera. And calligraphy. First, shall we probe into the origin and evolution of Wu Shu? The origin of Wu Shu may be traced back to prehistoric times when our ancestors used stones and wooden clubs in hunting. Both for subsistence and self-defense. In tribal strife, they used their tools as weapons. With the development of bronze casting, the variety of weapons increased and their quality improved. Later, Wu Shu. Came under the influence of Buddhism and Taoism. Ge Hong, a Taoist philosopher and a physician of Eastern Jing Dynasty, integrated martial arts with Qi Gong. Qi Gong is the breathing exercise. He put forward the theory of external. And internal work, which is still in use today. The court examination system initiated in the Sui Dynasty required both military men and scholars to practice Wu Shu. There were both civil service. And military imperial examinations. China has a long history of martial tradition. Over the past two thousand years, hundreds of distinctive styles have been developed, which are often classified by families, sects. Or schools, so Wu Shu has developed into a great variety of schools and styles. Chinese martial arts can be categorized into northern and southern styles, separated by the Yangtze River. There are over 100 schools of boxing in the Yellow River Valley and about 80 in the Yangtze River Basin. Each school has its own characteristics. Chinese martial arts can also be split into external and internal work. External training. Includes eyes, hands, stances, and figure. Internal training includes breathing, mind, strength, and spirit. As we know, Wu Shu has developed into a great variety of schools and styles. To name just a few, long boxing, shadow boxing or tai chi, form and wheel boxing, southern boxing, 
Shaolin boxing, Mantis boxing, and Drunkard boxing. Long boxing demands quickness and valor. It is liked by young people, popular in the north. It is swift and vigorous. Shadow boxing or Tai Chi is known for its slow rhythm and gentle movements. It is suitable for people of all ages, especially elderly people. Form and wheel boxing is vigorous in its balanced motions and poised steps. Xing Yi Quan is popular with young and middle-aged people. Popular in the north, form and wheel boxing imitates animal movements. The five basic movements are connected with the theory of five elements. The five basic movements include cleaving. Drilling, straining, scraping, and crossing. Cleaving is connected with metal. Drilling is connected with water. Straining is connected with wood. Scraping. Is associated with fire. Crossing is associated with earth. Southern boxing is widespread in China's southern areas. Its practitioners utter shouts and cries now and then to make their movements more forceful. Wen Chun is a kind of southern boxing. Have you watched the movie Ye Wen? Ye Wen was a master of Wen Chun. Bruce Lee had learned Wen Chun from him. Shaolin Temple. Was located on Songshan Mountain in Henan Province. It enjoys great reputation for its distinctive style of martial arts. Shaolin boxing is popular in the north. It is known for its tight and compact movement, swiftness, and vigor. Shaolin Temple is the ancestral temple, the birthplace of Zen Buddhism, Zen sect. It is said that Bodhidharma, an Indian Buddhist master, came here in the fifth century, and through meditating by facing a wall for nine years. He developed Zen Buddhism. Bodhidharma was the founder of Zen school in China. In Shaolin boxing, there is one movement known as One Finger Zen. It is considered the secret of Shaolin. The practitioner focuses. And concentrates all his strength and energy onto one finger, so that he is able to stand upside down on that single finger absolutely still. 
Shaolin boxing is the combination of motion and stillness, as described in the song. Sit like a bell, stand like a pine tree, and walk like the wind. In certain styles, the practitioner imitates movements of animals and birds, such as the mantis. Here we can see the mantis boxing. The practitioner also imitates drunken humans, like the drunkard boxing. There is a famous movie. Drunken Master, performed by Jackie Chan. In spite of its rich variety, Wu Shu has four main types: bare-handed boxing, or empty-handed boxing. Wielding of weapons like sword, broadsword, stick, combat, offensive and defensive, collective performances or group performances. The paper cutting posted here is the movement apparent close. From twenty-four posture simplified Tai Chi, and we can appreciate bare-handed boxing. There are eighteen kinds of ancient weapons. Weapons used in martial arts fall into three categories: long weapons. Short weapons and flexible weapons. Long weapons include spear, broadsword, and stick. Stick or rod or cudgel. Short weapons include short sword. Dagger and hook. Flexible weapon is also called soft weapon, such as three section cudgels, seven section whip, nine section whip, etc. Remember the dazzling performance of three section cudgels of Bruce Lee. Wu Shu is more than kung fu; it embodies a profound philosophy. There are three aspects of martial arts. Martial arts. Martial ethics and martial artistry. Here, the Chinese character Wu means martial, valiant, vigorous. As to martial arts, kung fu, martial. Is concerned with bloody war and soldiers, while arts reminds us of the nature, beauty, and all the good. The two words are mingled in one single term, including much cultural insight. Wu Shu is. By no means limited to external movement, it emphasizes the full display of internal temperament, mental attitude, and the potential of the human being. It can not only strengthen the bones and the muscles, but also the internal organs 
and intelligence. In terms of martial ethics, Wu Shu is more than Kung Fu. It embodies a profound philosophy reflected in martial ethics. Martial ethics advocates respect for human life. Man is regarded as one of the three greats. Together with the heaven and earth, it requires that a person exercise self-restraint, never abusing his abilities to seek personal gratification or to oppress those weaker than himself. He should seek to uphold justice. Remain fearless in the face of brutality, and cultivate modesty and a spirit of cooperation. To be specific, martial ethics falls into two categories: deed and mind. Deed is extroverted. While mind is introverted. In terms of deed, the virtues include humility, sincerity, politeness, loyalty, and trust. With regard to mind, the virtues include courage, patience. Endurance, perseverance, and will. Besides martial arts and martial ethics, we also have martial artistry. Wu Shu is long associated with dance. It has a beautifying effect on the physique. And a positive effect on the character. It is artistic and charismatic. Here is the paper cutting of the movement, kicking with left heel. Isn't it artistic and charismatic? There are some notable practitioners. When people talk of martial arts, they most immediately think of Bruce Lee, Li Xiaolong, and his great accomplishment in boxing, sword play, blade, and sticks. With his superb kung fu, he became the embodiment of Chinese martial arts. His dazzling performance of three-section stick left a deep impression on the audience. It was also Bruce Lee who first put the word kung fu into the English dictionary. Bruce Lee was one of the most famous kung fu film stars in the whole world. In movies, he always acted as a hero and defeated the bad guys by using his unique Chinese kung fu. Jackie Chan and Jet Li are also notable practitioners. Have you watched their kung fu films? Of course. Many producers have made films or TV series about Chinese martial arts. Here, I'd like to recommend ten famous kung fu movies.
the smiling proud wanderer, the moon warriors, swordsmen, new longman in, Huang Fei Hong, eastern evil and western poison, the blade. Wind and cloud, crouching tiger and hidden dragon, and hero. Now let's move on to Tai Chi, the Chinese martial art, drawing the elegant circles of life. What is Tai Chi. Literally, Tai means big. Ji means extremely. Tai Chi means extremely big. Here we can see the Tai Chi diagram, the two fish. Tai Chi is based on the negative and the positive theory. The outer circle itself represents a whole, namely everything in the universe. Tai Chi is the supreme ultimate. It is the source of all things in the universe. White fish represents yang elements and is generally depicted as rising on the left. Black fish represents yin elements and is shown descending on the right. There is a small dot of the different color at the fullest point indicating how each will transform into the other. Yin and Yang are mutually rooted. They mutually wax and wane and mutually transform. They function by reciprocal action. Yin and Yang are two polar opposites into which all things can be classified. Thus, dark and light, life and death, male and female, good and evil, strong and weak, are all manifestations of yin and yang. Have you noticed that there are no straight lines? What we can see are all curves. Being circular is one of the important characteristics of shadow boxing. Performing shadow boxing is just like drawing circles again and again, while being smooth and round is a major criteria. Shadow boxing draws the elegant circles of life through moving, jumping, dodging, and unfolding. Dodging means evading, avoiding. Unfolding means stretching. So shadow boxing draws the elegant circles of life through moving, jumping, dodging, and unfolding so as to turn exterior circles of energy into interior circles of energy. Once the interior circles of energy is established, how can disease attack you? What are the benefits of practicing Tai Chi? 
Tai Chi used to be a martial art. Since it can help people keep fit and healthy, it quickly developed into a major kind of physical exercise. It can adjust the neural, respiratory, digestive, coronary, brain, and circulatory systems of the human body. Tai Chi enjoys great popularity in China. It is now captivating the attention of more and more people in the world. Tai Chi falls into many different types, mainly fist, sword, broadsword. Fan, push hand. The most popular is the fist, the bare-handed boxing. There are also Tai Chi sword and the Tai Chi broadsword, the wielding of weapons. A Tai Chi sword has five parts: sheath or scabbard. Blade, hand guard, handle, and a tassel. Here we can see the collective performance of Tai Chi sword. Really stylish and amazing. Here we can see the collective performance of bare-handed boxing. A common scene in China. Push hand is rather unique. It is a defensive and offensive combat between two practitioners, trying to make the opponent lose balance. Confrontational and entertaining. The performance of Tai Chi broadsword is valiant and vigorous. Women enjoy dancing with Tai Chi fan, colorful, graceful, and nice looking. As to the origin of Tai Chi. Legend goes that Zhang Sanfeng of the Southern Song Dynasty, on Mount Wu Dang, created Tai Chi, but there is no evidence in historical records. However, Wu Dang style Tai Chi is widespread in China, especially Wu Dang sword. Zhang Sanfeng enjoyed longevity. He was two hundred and twelve years old. He lived from Southern Song Dynasty through Yuan Dynasty to the Ming Dynasty. Legend goes that Zhang Sanfeng. Created Tai Chi after he had witnessed a fight between a crane and a snake. The crane could not catch the snake because the snake always moved in curves. Tai Chi is known as shadow boxing, with the imaginary enemy. Each movement has its defensive and offensive meaning. For example, this movement is called high pet on the horse, selected from twenty-four posture simplified Tai Chi. It is designed to attack 
the opponent's face. The movement is offensive. We will basically take twenty-four postures simplified Tai Chi, for example, unless otherwise noted. This movement is called Twin Peaks. The two fists intend to attack the opponent's ears, pressing from both sides. It is offensive. This movement is called brushing knee and twisting steps on both sides. One hand is to ward off the enemy's arm, to push aside his arm, being defensive. The other hand is to push the enemy's chest, being offensive. There are five traditional styles of Tai Chi named after the family from which it originated, and arranged in terms of seniority here. Chen family style, Yang family style, Wu family style, Wu. Family style, Sun family style. The paper cutting here is the Yang style movement, kicking with right heel. The earliest is the Chen family style. Most people believe that Tai Chi. Originated from Chen Jiagou Village in Henan Province, four hundred years ago, it was developed by Chen Wang Ting. It is somewhat forceful and intertwining. However, it ranks the second in terms of popularity. Here we may appreciate paper cuttings of some Chen style movements, such as single whip, swinging foot, and stretching down. Vajra pounding mortar. Vajra is Buddha's guardian warrior. And mortar is a bowl in which you can crush things such as rice and herb. Most people practice the Yang family style. Yang family style is the most popular and widely practiced style in the world today. It was developed by Yang Luchan. It is soft, gentle, and elegant. Usually, people begin with the twenty-four postures simplified Tai Chi, which is. Yang style Tai Chi, and we will basically take twenty-four posture Yang style Tai Chi for example, unless otherwise stated. Wu family style was developed by Wu Yuxiang. The movements are small and compact. 
it ranks the fifth in terms of popularity. Wu family style was developed by Wu Jianquan. It is more relaxed and introverted, strengthening inner cultivation. It ranks the third in terms of popularity. Sun family style was developed by Sun Lu Tang. The postures are coherent and continuous, without stop or break, like floating clouds and running water. It ranks the fourth in terms of popularity. Shall we try to practice some basic postures? We will begin with external work. We will work on hand form, stance, and figure. They all belong to external work. Now, let's have a go at the movements. In terms of hand form, there are three kinds, palm, fist, and hook. Palm, relax, being natural so that the air can circulate and flow into the palm. Fist or punch, make a fist. Neither too loose nor too tight. Hook. Five fingertips gather together. Have you noticed that in traditional Chinese festivals, people salute and greet with hands folded and clasped? This is the ancient etiquette. It has profound cultural insight. The right hand is a fist, a punch, symbolizing force, violence, and martial arts. The left hand is a palm. The thumb is bending indicating that I will always be modest and humble. I will never try to be number one. The four fingers symbolize morality or ethics, beauty, wisdom, and artistry, respectively. The left palm holding the right fist signifies that we should control the martial arts with martial ethics and martial artistry. The major stances include opening stance, horse riding stance, bow stance, Void or empty stance, crouching stance, standing on single leg, cross stance. This is the opening stance. Keep the distance between your feet the same as the width of your shoulder. Two tiptoes facing front. Here we can see the demonstration of the starting posture.
Here is the horse riding stance. As the name indicates, the stance looks like riding a horse. Crouch down with your feet wide apart. Keep steady. For example, this movement is called pushing forearm in horse riding stance. The movement is selected from the 42 posture Tai Chi for competition. It is a posture of the Chen style, somewhat forceful. You have to use some strength. Bow stance is widely used in Tai Chi, thus very important. The front leg is the bow, and the knee should not exceed the tiptoe. The back leg is the arrow, but not too straight. The two feet should be horizontally 10 centimeters apart. The two feet mustn't stay in the same line. Otherwise, you will find it difficult to keep balance. For example, the movement single whip is in bow stance. Here, the left hand is a palm. The right hand is a hook. Imagine you are riding on a horse wielding the whip. There is also the void stance or empty stance. For example, this movement is called holding lute. Lute is the traditional Chinese musical instrument. It is the Chinese violin, also called pipa. We must clarify void and solidness. Here, the right leg is solid, while the left leg is void. The left heel just slightly touching the ground. Your weight falls on the right leg. The crouching stance is fairly difficult, yet nice looking. It's rather painstaking to push down. However, we can also do it in a high position. This posture is called pushing down and standing on right leg. The name of this stance is standing on single leg, like a golden pheasant. This movement is called pushing down and standing on left leg. Stand steady and make sure that the elbow is opposite to the knee. The shoulder is opposite to the hip, and the hand is opposite to the foot. Cross stance is also called resting stance. Crouch down with two legs crossed. Here we can see the motion, catching and punching in cross stance. 
This motion is selected from forty-two posture Tai Chi for competition. It's rather important for practitioners to do the standing exercise called standing like a stake. Pose the opening stance and stand still, holding the ball. Try to find the feeling of sitting, standing as if sitting. In terms of figure, there are some tips. Always remember these tips while practicing Tai Chi. Erecting head and relaxing neck. Erect head as if the head is pushing up from below. Lowering shoulders and elbows, contracting chest and lengthening back. This is intended to keep the vital energy within yourself. Relaxing waist and restraining hip. The waist must be very flexible. Separating thighs and bending knees. The legs mustn't be stiff and straight. Now, keep clear of all earthly worries and enter the state of supreme ultimate. Enter the state of Tai Chi. And imagine. You are sitting on the rock, leaning on the mountain in the back, looking at the great sea in the front, and holding the floating ball. A practitioner. Is expected to regulate the physical body, breathing, and the mind to achieve harmony in body, which is external work. Evenness in breathing, which is internal training. Calmness in mind, which is internal training. To achieve harmony in body, there are some tips. Harmonizing between upper and lower body, rooting with feet, leading with waist, and moving with fingers. Clarifying void and solidness. Being coherent and continuous. Without stop or break, like flowing clouds and running water. Seeking stillness in motion. Tai Chi can be regarded as the dynamic Qi Gong. Harmonizing between upper and lower body. Rooting with feet, leading with waist, moving with fingers, taking root firmly into the earth. Here we can see the movement: rolling back, upper arm. We roll back the upper arm while retreating, and turning waist is most important. We have to harmonize between the upper and the lower body at the same time.
clarifying void and solidness. Here is a graceful movement called white crane spreading its wings. The right leg is solid, while the left leg is void. The left tiptoe just slightly touching the ground. Your weight falls on the right leg. This is the void stance or empty stance. The arms are compared to the wings of a white crane. Being coherent and continuous without stop or break, like the flowing clouds and the running water. This movement is parting wild horse men on both sides. Move on smoothly and fluently. Step forward gently and softly like a cat. Seeking stillness in motion. Qi Gong is the breathing exercise. We have both static Qi Gong and dynamic Qi Gong. As to static Qi Gong, sitting or standing while breathing. Static outside. And dynamic inside. There is motion in stillness. In terms of dynamic qigong, moving while breathing, dynamic outside and static inside, seeking stillness in motion. Tai Chi can be regarded as the dynamic Qi Gong. Look at the movement, cloud hands. Is the, practi is the practitioner static or moving? The performer is moving, but try to seek stillness in motion. To achieve evenness in breathing, there are some tips. Using reverse breathing. Inhale fresh air through the nose while making inward movements. Abdomen contracting and air going up. Exhale, breathe air out, or exhale through the nose or mouth while making outward movements, abdomen expanding and air flowing down. When we begin the movement, we inhale. When we finish the posture, we exhale. When we make inward movement, we inhale. When we make outward movements, we exhale. Correspondingly, the diaphragm between the chest and abdomen will go up and down like a massage of the internal organs. Building an immortal bridge. Put the tongue tip at the back of the upper teeth to build an immortal bridge connecting the Ren channel in the front and the Du channel in the back. 
According to traditional Chinese medicine, a network of twelve channels, fifteen collaterals, and eight extraordinary channels spreads throughout the body. The eight extraordinary channels include Ren channel in the front and Du channel in the back. If we put the tongue tip behind the upper teeth, we can build an immortal bridge to connect the Ren channel in the front and the Du channel in the back. Breathing as deep, slow, even, and long as possible. Inhale fully and exhale completely. The speed of Tai Chi should be controlled by breathing, and the pace of movement should be controlled by the length of breathing. Tai Chi is the practice of Qi. Qi. Is the airflow, the vitality, the vital energy. Inhale fresh qi and exhale waste qi, so as to keep fresh energy in the body. When airflow goes smoothly, blood circulation will also go smoothly. In the beginning, just breathe naturally. To achieve calmness in mind, there are also some tips. Being upright and comfortable, feeling safe and sound. It is critically important to relax. To relax is to give space for creation. Let the brain be clever and let the heart be soft and calm. Learn to be relaxed, quiet, and natural. Tai Chi is. A、moving yoga. Thinking and storing vitality in the pubic region below navel. The pubic region is the elixir field. It is called Dan Tian in Chinese. We can locate the pubic region. Three horizontal fingers below the navel in the abdomen. Using notion rather than strength, the mind directs the circulation of qi, the airflow. The inner circulation of air generates outer strength. Thus, softness is stronger than hardness. Yielding is more efficient than confronting. There are a lot of dialectical ideas. That's all for today. Thank you very much.